What's up guys? Alex here with RJ OCD Recovery. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about why therapy may not be the answer for you in overcoming RJ and RJ OCD. Now, I want to start off this video by just clarifying that I'm a fan of therapy, right? I think therapy is great. I think just about every person on this planet should be going to therapy at some point in their lives talking about their lives and their issues, right? Everyone should be doing that. It would change the world. That being said, RJ is a different beast, right? And I don't believe that going to therapy is necessarily going to be enough for you to overcome it. So why exactly is that? Well, for starters, the vast majority of therapists are totally unfamiliar with RJ. Right? And that's a major, major problem. I've had multiple clients who have worked with me. They've said that before they started with me, they went to a therapist and they started talking about RJ and they just had no idea what it was. Right, And if you're going to get help from somebody who's totally unfamiliar with the condition that you need help with, you're, you're, you're already off to a poor start. Right? So unless your therapist is really good and really experienced and is doing their own research outside of, you know, their regular training, it's very unlikely that they're going to even know much about the condition and what tools are needed to help address it. So you feel better and you recover, right? You know, the fact that it's not even in their training, you know, it's, it's not in their book that they study, right? That's, that's what uh, a couple of my clients have told me. It, it just does not bode well. You can definitely get some benefit from going to a therapist, but usually it's not addressing the deep enough root causes of the experience of who you are. Most of the time it's going to be moving things around in your conscious awareness, changing your ego, right? The, the way that you view the world and maybe most likely not getting deep into your subconscious and elevating your level of awareness so much that you can actually start making these changes. So unless you've got like a rock star therapist, it's usually not going to turn up that well. The other piece here is that there can be a number of different contributing factors to what's fueling the retroactive jealousy, right? And the OCD, of course, if you have that as well. So you hear me talk a lot about root causes and taking a comprehensive approach to overcoming this condition. And there's a very important reason for that, right? Because you can have, you know, damage done to your brain from traumas, emotional traumas, mental traumas, even physical traumas, right? You can have major issues with your physical body, like toxins in your body, uh, digestive issues. These things have a real tremendous impact on your mental and emotional health. And you can be totally unaware of certain emotions that are running you that are so deep in your psyche, you're just totally unaware of them and how they're fueling this condition. So this is why it requires a comprehensive approach because therapy is not really going to address these things on a deep level. If you address the mental, part, the emotional and the spiritual part, and the physical part, you're going to see some tremendous improvements, right? Because that changes all aspects, all parts of who you are. So my best recommendation for you is to find a professional or a coach who's number one, familiar with retroactive jealousy and OCD in the first place. And also somebody who is going to help you actually address the root causes of what is influencing the experience of who you are inside, because it might take way more than the typical experience that you might have in therapy and uh, CBT. Okay. I hope you got something of value from this video today. If you need help in overcoming retroactive jealousy, sign up for a free consult link below in the description. And I hope to hear from you soon. Take care guys.